And breaking news here, Fidel Castro has died at the age of 90. On the left there, his brother making the announcement last night. It's now 11 in the morning there. On the right here, you see hundreds of people celebrating his death in Little Havana. This is in Miami. ABC News' Lana Zak takes a look back on Castro's reign. This is the scene from Miami's Little Havana, a few hours after the announcement of Fidel Castro's death at 90. Con profundo dolor. He was born on August 13, 1926 in Oriente Province, Cuba. As a child, he was educated at private Catholic schools and later went on to study law at the University of Havana. Castro became an activist for the poor and promised democracy, but went on to rule Cuba for more than 40 years with an iron fist. I am not afraid of saying I'm a convinced communist. I feel honored of being a communist, and I hope I will be till the last uh, breath. In 1960, Castro joined forces with the Soviet Union. The U.S. retaliated by breaking off diplomatic relations with Cuba and imposing a trade embargo. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy approved a CIA invasion force of 1,300 Cuban exiles who went ashore at the Bay of Pigs. Castro was able to fend off the invasion, but in 1962, American spy planes discovered he had allowed the Soviets to put nuclear missiles in Cuba. I have directed the armed forces to prepare for any eventualities. U.S. naval vessels moved in and the Soviets backed down in exchange for a pledge that America would not attack Cuba. Soviet-style economy Castro promoted eventually produced dissent. In 1980, thousands of Cubans braved rough seas and dehydration to reach America in the Mariel boat lift. In the early 1990s, the fall of the USSR cost Cuba billions of dollars in Soviet assistance and trade, leading to widespread shortages and rationing. With the demise of the Soviet Union, we have suffered the equivalent to a prison. We have also failed to be trade. In 1999, there would be more conflict with the U.S. when the eyes of the world were once again focused on Castro during a bitter fight over the fate of a five-year-old Cuban boy named Ilian Gonzalez. In May 2002, President George Bush announced his initiative for a new Cuba, saying he would maintain the embargo against the country unless Castro stepped down from power. To make them free and fair, they must give opposition candidates the freedom to organize, assemble, and speak. In 2006, Castro temporarily handed over some of his powers to his younger brother Raul as he battled health problems, but he never returned to power. Even before his death, there were many changes in Cuba, re-establishing diplomatic ties with the U.S. and President Obama's historic visit there earlier this year. And now the world will likely see even more changes with Fidel Castro gone. Lana Zak, ABC News, Washington. Ten is viewers.